Okay, I am back with Coach Temple Robinson. Hi, Coach Temple. It's been a little over a year since we did our first Coach Spotlight interview, and I'm so glad to get to have another conversation to check back in to see how things are going. So thanks for being here with us. Yeah, so thank you so much for the follow-up. I'm very excited to be here and to share my reflections and experiences over the past year. I love it. Well, we were just chatting before we hit record, and uh, you let me know that, um, you know, when we first had the interview a little over a year ago, you were pretty early on, just looking for your first one or two clients early on in the coach training program here at ACE, and uh, you let me know you're you're almost complete with your 125 coaching hours to get your certification. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I just appreciate I've, I've had to receive coaching to be able to get there. Um, it was a new experience for me to go out and actually pursue clients. Um, and it's been a wonderful experience because uh, the people who are in my network, they love and care for me. And at the same time, they were not in the position at the time to send me any clients. So the clients that I have and had in the past I literally went out and hit the pavement. That is how I got them as clients. So I'm feeling very successful, consistently doing what I said I would do on a, uh, on a regular basis with clarity, focus, ease, and grace. Amazing. Well, I just want to acknowledge your resilience. I mean, you're demonstrating the heart of being an entrepreneur. You know, uh, try something. If it's not working, keep trying things until... Uh, you make it happen, and you you've done it uh, in just over a year since we last talked. So uh, well done. So tell me a little bit more when you say hit the pavement. Where were you, what do you mean? Where were you showing up? How were you connecting with people? How did you get some of these clients? Great question. Thank you for asking. What I did was I decided first of all who was my ideal client. And so my ideal client are professionals, especially female uh, women professionals. And so what I did was I joined organizations where my ideal client would be uh, could be found. There were also organizations that I also wanted to be a part of as well. So um, it was a match both ways. I got very involved in my community. I started volunteering and really had a joy volunteering and I met people that way. And so basically, I, um, oh, I also attended different community fairs. If there was a community fair, I would ask to see if I could set up a booth and I was present there. And so by choosing to expand myself to do those things that I really did have an interest in doing, because in general, if I wasn't a coach, I would have gone to the community fair anyway. I would have been a part of those organizations anyhow, and I would have volunteered anyway. I just decided to put my coaching hat on and then also share that I'm a coach and see if I could get clients that way. And it worked for me. Amazing. I, I think people out there who are either new coaches or looking to start up as being coaches, this is so helpful to just hear some examples of where you can find people you know, uh, especially if if you reach out to your immediate network and you're not necessarily getting leads right away, uh, just places you can show up in your community. And I appreciate what you were saying about uh, this is stuff that you would be interested in doing anyway. Uh, a lot of times people think, OK, if I'm building a coaching practice, does that mean that I can't do some of the other stuff that I love or I'm passionate about. Um, but it's quite the opposite what you're describing. It's, it's you're just showing up in your life and your community the way that's authentic and just letting people know while you're at it, hey, I'm a coach. So well done. Yes. Yeah. It's very possible. I can speak for myself but the best. The likelihood of my ideal client being professional women falls right in line with the majority of people that I surround myself with anyway. So there's a high likelihood that who you want as an ideal client is who you surround yourself around with anyway or who you see yourself uh, surrounding yourself with anyway. So there are a lot of natural places to intersect there. And the more you talk, the more word will get out about you. 
the more you put yourself out there. Um, I even, um, there's a magazine in the area and um, I approach the editor and I write for the magazine. And it's amazing how putting yourself out there, people will become familiar with your name and they will become familiar with your face. And so now when I go out, literally a year later, it's not uncommon for me to hear, oh, I've heard your name before, or oh, I've seen your face before. So it says something to the power of, of coaching, um, getting coaching while I was doing this, as well as just putting yourself out there. I love it. So great to hear. I'm so glad we're getting to check in uh, after this time. This is so uh, inspiring to see your progress. Um, tell me about... Uh, how now that you've worked you've had much more hours with clients you work with more clients you're a more experienced coach than when we last spoke um how have you evolved as a coach what shifted in terms of uh, what it's like to be coaching people that is a great question it feels very good to know that the work that I do with someone is actually supporting them in living the best life that they can live at this moment. It is very thrilling to know that the product of what we do together, first of all, there actually usually is a tangible product in some way, shape or form, whether or not it's a goal that they've achieved or a product that they've created, which was the goal that they wanted to achieve. And then to know that when they do these things, one of the first people that they want to call is me. And they want to share their joy and what happened with me. Um, one of my favorite success stories right now, I have actually two. One of my clients, um, I said, if you could do anything that you wanted to do, what would it be? And she said, well, I really want to create a journal. And so in the three months that we worked together, not only did she create her journal, but she went forward and actually found a manufacturer to create her journal. And now she has samples. And so to actually see a client take an idea, literally an idea, and bring it into fruition is a very rewarding experience, not just for the client, but for me as well. Another um, really good story that I have is a um, pastor that I'm working with. And I didn't know it at the time, but she shared with me afterwards that when we started working together, she just had many things going on and it felt as if she did not have things in the proper perspective for herself. Well, the outcome of us working together is that she has another job as a secretary at her school. She's the lead secretary, so she deals with a lot in that job. Well, someone that she does not get along with too well, well, I can't say they don't get along, but the relationship hasn't been the best, i say it like that, came up to her and said, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever it is, it's, it's working very, very well. And it completely surprised her because she received this compliment from someone that they've just had a rough relationship in the past. And not only was that a very a big compliment to her, the other things that have happened, her church members are now basically taking the lead in what they're doing. She's able to get more done. Her life is now in focus. And so she's received so much benefit from coaching that initially we were together for three months and she decided to extend her contract for another six months. And the person that I mentioned with the journal, we were working together for three months and she decided to extend it another three months. So it feels good to know that these people see me as an asset and really supporting them and accomplishing what they want to accomplish so that they can really feel like they're making a contribution to the world. Oh, thank you for sharing those those stories. I was um, I was gonna ask you to hear a couple success stories. So that's, uh, that's perfect. Um, and I love what you're pointing to in terms of uh, contract renewal and even for longer, you know, it's okay, that was three months, let's work together for another six months. Uh, I find that a lot of new coaches oftentimes start with shorter contracts, like three months, just to kind of lower the bar to get going. Uh, and uh, pretty quickly, when you work with more clients, you see that, you know, six to even 12 month contracts can be really supportive for people. And, um, and people are, 
are willing to do it because they know that it takes time to get results and that's what they're there for. So I'm so glad that you're doing longer contracts and getting the renewals because that definitely uh, um, makes the, it kind of stabilizes the business, doesn't it? You know, you don't have to start from scratch with all the clients. You have people who want to just keep working with you. That's a very good point because it's like every three months and like my three months time is kind of coming up because they all kind of came on at the same time. And so um, they all kind of like fall off at the same time too. However, what I will say is that we get very good training with ACE because I can say that I have a retention rate of about 30, 35%, something like that, where I have people extend their contract because they see the value that I'm bringing and I contribute that to a supporting me and getting really good training as a coach and also supporting me through my own moments of mastery. One of the things that you said that, that really stuck out to me is how I'm at a moment of mastery right now in terms of, okay, when am I going to shift to share with my clients? Hey, let's do this six month contract. And not pushing them about it, but just really sharing. If you really want to get maximum gain, we can do something for three months. There's no, no problem with that. But let's do this in six months. And I also have I had so many moments of mastery. And, and I just want to encourage people that you're not the only one that's sitting down and your brain is, is just really going there with all the things that feel impossible because I am in a place and space where people are not aware of coaching at all. So there's a lot of education that I continue to do about what coaching is and how it can support them. And some people, they get it. And then some people don't necessarily see the value at this time for it. And so that's something that I had to learn how to accept. I also had to learn how to accept a no. And that rejection is not necessarily, at first it was, I felt like it was a rejection of me, but it's not necessarily a rejection of me. It's the rejection of the fact that at this moment, it may not be fit for them at this time, but it doesn't mean no forever. And it also doesn't mean that they're not going to tell somebody else about it. Case in point, oh my gosh. Yeah, wouldn't the clients that I have that like, you know, I mean, he's a peanut butter jelly client, okay? He has a name for himself. And a long story short, the guy that gave me his name told me no, but told him about me. And now I have them as the client. So um, the moments of mastery that we go through and, and, and that I go through also help me understand that as an entrepreneur, A, I can do it. B, I can be successful. And C, learning how to accept a no is not a rejection of me. It's a rejection at this moment. It's not even a rejection. It's just they're just not interested in this moment. But there are other people who are and be willing to talk to them. Uh, so uh, so useful to share that experience for folks who uh, it's so normal to fear the no, right? And so many people when they teach sales and enrollment, how to build practices, it's about making sure you get a yes. But uh, how you're being with a no, uh, you just demonstrated one of uh, the principles we teach. It's just like how you be with a no because it's really just a not a fit at this time, as you're saying, it says so much more about you than how you are with a yes. And I love that you're seeing the results. It's like, oh, I was, this person wasn't a fit. They saw that I didn't try to pressure them and they referred somebody else who is a fit. So much easier than trying to make it a fit. <laughs> so uh, that's such a useful uh, anecdote for, for folks who are starting out to hear. So uh, well done. I just see how, how fully you are showing up as a coach right now. And it's it's just uh, um, exciting, exciting to see because I know how much of a difference you're making for people. Well, thank you so much. And the other thing that I really appreciate about ACE is the fact that um, one of the unspoken things that I also think is also spoken in the program, we have to do the work on ourselves as well. So. What are my standards of integrity when I'm going through my moment of mastery? How am I accessing my voice of wisdom? The more you even use your own tools on yourself, like we're supposed to, and then continuing to go get coaching for yourself with your mentor coach, 
going to CIEs when necessary, connecting with other coaches that are ACE coaches to support you through whatever you are experiencing at the moment. I have a firm belief that that also attracts clients for me. And I've heard more than one person, oh, I want to be a life coach. I've heard of life coaching, blah, blah, blah. And one of the first questions I asked him, have you experienced coaching? No, I haven't, but blah, blah, blah. And I say, you know what? One of the first things I recommend to you is for you to experience coaching first to see whether or not this is for you. Because the more you walk the walk, for, second of all, it's easy for you to talk the talk. And then um, and it's just a natural thing where that energy just shows up and it supports how you show up. So I would encourage people to do that. And also, um, and I know this may sound crazy, get used to the no. That was my biggest issue. I had to get used to the no. <laughs> the more I got used to the no, the easier it became. Because in my mind, I just took it as a, oh, never, it'll never happen, blah, blah, blah. The more graceful you are with it, the more it actually attracts people to you. I have a strong belief that a lot of these people who are telling me no now are just watching. And then eventually they'll say, oh, well, I might need to get a little taste of that. And then I'll say, hey, come on in. It's room for you at the table. So I'm excited about it. Well put, Temple. I can see your excitement. Um. This is great. A couple more questions. Um, I see you showing up. You know, one of the things about ACE is the community of coaches, right? That's one of the things I think that's unique about this program is how much people love to connect and support each other. I see you uh, on our online Slack channel all the time. I know you're connecting with other coaches. Uh, I know that you're always willing to give support uh, and also ask for and receive support. So um, what's it been like over the last uh, year or so being part of this community of uh, like-minded coaches and, and what are some of your experiences that you have that have been valuable? That is a very great question. Entrepreneurship um, is a handful. Um, the, and, and if you are really committed to entrepreneurship, Okay, uh, uh, it, there are a lot of ups, and then there could be some times when it's not feeling like a up. Uh, you know, there are some times when it's just feeling like a, a you're just consistent, and then there are some times that they're just downs. It feels very good to be in a community where I am with other like minded people that are going through exactly what I'm going through. I still keep in contact with people that went through um, my first two foundational courses. And we are all going through it together. Now, some of us may, you know, revenue-wise may be pulling more than others of us. But in the end, the experience of going out, establishing yourself as a new coach, and the experience with that, um, it feels very good to be in a community where we can talk about that, we can share ideas, and we celebrate each other. And when we're going through those down moments, we support each other because we're all speaking the same language and we have similar goals in common. One of the best things that happened to me was to connect with other ACE coaches because case in point, so I just attended the BMW Diversity Supplier Exchange. And basically that is a program where BMW rents out the convention center the first half of the day is professional development. The second half of the day, they have tier one suppliers and women owned, minority owned and veteran owned businesses have an opportunity to approach tier one suppliers and initiate a relationship with the intent of eventually becoming a supplier to that tier one supplier. So then you consider tier two supplier to BMW. I was having an extreme monkey mind of working on my capability statement. And it got to the point to where I said, okay, I'm going to have to pick up the phone and call somebody. So I called someone who was in both of my two foundational courses. And this is like seven, eight o'clock at night, some hour like that when most people are getting ready to wind down. And I said, look, 
do you have some time? And he said, yes. And so we sat there and he coached me through creating my capability statement. The amount of support that he gave me in that moment meant so much to me because when we got off the phone, I was able to go and create my capability statement. There is another person that I was in the training with, and this person actually started with another cadre, but we ended up taking a course together. He and I get together once a week, and we have this power hour, but guess what? I got the power hour idea from someone that was in my peer group. We get together once a week for this power hour and we do whatever we need to do for the business. And it's one of the best things ever because those phone calls that I, I'm like, I got to make this phone call, but I keep putting it off and keep putting it off. Well, guess what? This is the hour during the week for me to get it done. And again, he's also someone that is at the beginning of his practice and is um, actively growing his practice. So I do not feel alone because there are times when I, Especially, especially when I first started, I felt alone because I'm like, you know, over here in South Carolina world, just in front of my computer. But being able to make these connections with people who are on the West Coast, people who are Midwest, um, people who are in other spaces and places, um, technology brings us together. So it's been great. Amazing. That's uh, I mean, just describing the, the spirit of community and the energy of support. It's such a... Uh, um, core principle of this approach and it's just how it shows up it's what uh it was keep keeps people going i find you know i know when i was going through this program years ago uh that's absolutely what kept me going is connecting with peers i had a mastermind group that we put together um it's just so much easier to do it together than than alone so i love seeing you demonstrate that and you really show up as the embodiment of community support um, so thanks for being such a, a powerful part of this community. Well, thank you for having me and I'm proud to contribute. Happy to do it. Well, I'd love to, uh, before we go, just, uh, hear your thoughts a little bit on our, uh, diversity and inclusion scholarship program. You know, we've been doing it for a couple years. We're looking for ways to, uh, bring it up to the next level. You're one of our, um, you know, early recipients, and I'd love to hear just your thoughts on uh, why it's important to have a, a program like that within a, an ACE coach training school. Great question. Right now, um, in terms of coaching and the kind of coaching that we do, um, pre underrepresented groups uh, don't necessarily compose the majority. And studies have shown that the more diversity that you have, the more agile an organization is, the more innovative an organization is, the more profits the organization can create. Not that ACE is about making profit, but we gotta pay our bills. <laughs> and um, ultimately, the more diverse a field is, the easier it is to be able to get the message out to everyone. So with that being said, first of all, I'm very proud to be one of the uh, early recipients of the program. When I started this program, I had just finished my master's degree at Clemson University, and I had a very large pull on me to become a coach, and I was very stressed out about how was I going to pay for it because I literally just finished you know, paying for this master's. And so to be able to get the support to go through this program was so significant to me because it allowed me to be able to make one of my dreams come true. I did not realize how much I was going to fall in love with coaching until I actually started doing the work. I knew I was going to like it. I knew I was probably going to be good at it, but I didn't realize I was going to fall in love with it like I did. And so being able to have the financial means to do it created a space for who I represent, which is uh, Black females, to be able to be in this space. Because guess what? Um, people, it's the concept of homogeneity. Uh, no, homogeneity. People tend to relate to those that they look like. And so if we want the message of coaching to be able to reach all people all across the world, 
that we're going to need all people across the world that represent those groups to be educated on it, to be able to spread it. So it feels very good to be able to be one of those people because I can speak with a good amount of certainty right now that my culture, they are aware of what coaching is, but they don't really know what coaching is enough to say this is going to be helpful for me. So I have the responsibility and also the opportunity to be able to present it to them and help them understand so that they can take advantage of it and see how it's helpful for them. And that is just not something that's off somewhere for people who can't afford it or whatever uh, perspectives they may have in their mind. Having this scholarship program makes it equitable for all people to be able to get access to such a rich resource. And if they are like me, which hopefully they are, um, I look forward to the day where I can give back to the program, not just through video, but also financially uh, give back because I see the impact that is made on me. I definitely want to be able to spread it forward to give that impact to someone else. So I think it's a great program. I think that it makes coaching accessible to all people. And by making it accessible to all people, um, ACE is definitely impacting not just local communities, but states and other countries and our whole world by creating this equitable resource for everyone. Brilliantly put, Temple. Uh, you're just such a, a stand for uh, the power of coaching out in, in all communities, all communities. Um, what would you say directly to someone who's uh, considering contributing or supporting the scholarship fund here at ACE? If you are committed to really recreating a more equitable world, if you are committed to really creating a space where everyone has the opportunity to really fulfill their life's purpose, then this is a wonderful program to consider. And you will want to consider this program because it benefits people like me. And I am a great product of this program. I'm also a humble product of this program. And as I seek to continue to share what this program has taught me, I also seek opportunities to be able to continue to pay it forward. So if you really want to make a lasting impact on someone's life so that they can really live the life that they want to live and to be able to contribute to others in a greater way as a result of it, consider donating to this program. Perfect. Thank you. I'm sure that'll uh, speak to some people's hearts. Uh, well, this has been, uh, I'm so glad we did this follow-up in interview. You know, this is the first yes. interview I've done of the Coach Spotlight series. Um, and it's it's so, I'm going to find some more people who are farther along in their journey because this is so great to see kind of a early on and then later on. Um, I'd love to end with one more question. Since you're nearing graduation, your certification, your ICF credentials, all that good stuff, that's a huge milestone. Uh, what's next for Coach Temple after that? What do you see in the future as a as a goal that you're you're envisioning playing for uh, after you achieve this this really big one? Question. <laughs> it's some great questions. One of my goals is to become a leadership development coach. Right now, I've been doing more of the low, uh, life coaching piece, but my desire is to become a leadership coach that provides professional development to Fortune 500 companies. And so I had an opportunity to put my um, name in the hat and in the ring, like I said, this past Wednesday with the BMW Diversity Supplier Exchange. I look forward to having other opportunities to do that. And in addition to that, I literally just had a conversation with Maria and I said, okay, when I graduate from the program, can you still continue to be my mentor? And in addition to that, can we continue to have CIEs? Because even though I will have the 125 hours to graduate, I still see myself sharpening my skills so that when I am in the room 
with these senior and mid-level executives that have these aspirational goals that they want to achieve, not only can I support them with achieving it, but I can support them well because I have been well-trained and I continue to seek opportunities to sharpen my craft. Amazing. I, I just want to acknowledge your dedication to continuous growth, to not just become being a, a really good coach, but a masterful coach um, to continue to get mentored, even as you're, you're certified and you're out there as a professional coach. And I just see the impact that you're going to continue to make. So um, it's just inspiring to see. Well, thank you so much. Um, like I said, I have so much respect for this program. And the only reason why I was able to really take advantage of it was because of the scholarship program. And so I am forever thankful for this opportunity. And so uh, I could write a book on it if I wanted to. <laughs> it was such <laughs> it was a great experience. Uh, I love it. Well, thank you so much for your time. Have a fantastic weekend, Temple. Uh, we'll be following as your career continues to develop up. And um, uh, yeah, thanks for this great conversation. Thank you, Greg. Have a great weekend.